All right, so the first thing you can click on is the electronic signature consent form. You find your customer with the correct name and you click on that. Today we're doing Justin Broberg. Important things on here is making sure you mark the yes box. Check that in capturing the signature of the customer. The customer will fill it in. We're just gonna do SOF for signature on file right now. You're gonna click next and submit. Second one you go to is the important information for persons moving household goods. Click on the correct name. Just verify the information is correct. Ask them if they've received the important information for persons moving household goods. This typically comes through in an email. They'll say yes. You'll hit next after you collect their signature and submit it. Or not to exceed form. This basically goes over the services we're providing you today. Moving, packing, unpacking, unloading, loading. Basically whatever you're doing for the day. However, on top of those charges, we have the additional charges of the double drive time, 12% fuel charge. And these are not included in the not to exceed. If you do not agree to the not to exceed amount, um, you can call in or call the Public Utilities Commission. They'll go over it with you. Basically, everyone usually agrees to it because it's a pretty high number that we usually don't come close to. Capture their signature. Submit. So these first three forms are all pretty simple. You basically collect the first signature, submit the form. After this, it gets a little more tricky. This is the release of liability. When you're doing the walkthrough with your customer, you wanna check and see, are you moving appliances? Are there anything outside the house that might cause you to damage a piece, including low hanging branches, chandeliers, other obstacles. You also have loading, unloading. Those are like the pod type deals. You have storage. Anytime you take anything out of storage or put anything into storage, mark that box. Prior damage, if you're moving a piece and you see like bottom, the bottom of a dresser has been hit by a vacuum a few times, something you can know, scratches on a table from silverware, it doesn't really matter. Just whatever you find. Unsafe or unique moving circumstances. I always put things like uh, spiral staircases on here. Basically things that you don't come across every day in a normal home. I also try to do additional note one and additional note two. You also have the option to do the third and we'll just do that for now. Basically see what they cover. You'll capture your customer's signatures or their initials, basically agreeing to what you've marked. So today we've got any packable items not in a box. That would include the things like lamps, TVs. We also have boxes packed by owner. We weren't aware of how the boxes were packed or exactly what was packed into those boxes, therefore we're not liable. Other, you can do customer requests only padding to be done in the truck, customer requests no padding and stretch wrapping, furniture being slid on hardwood floors, not responsible for damages caused to or from potted plants. Remember that one's also up to the discretion of the driver since we are technically not allowed to take anything living. Customer was on a time crunch, they only wanted stuff draped. So we'll mark that, move along. Oh, capture their uh, initials. Basically agreeing to the release of liability. You also wait to do that one until you get to the second house to submit it. Occasionally you'll say at the first house everything was fine. The second house, that's where you run into a spiral staircase. That's where the problem lies. So make sure you save it and then come back to it, which is what we'll do with the billing services agreement as well. Correct name. I usually ask the customer to verify the information. That way we head to the right address. You mark the used household goods and personal effects. Basically cover the rate that we're, that we're using today. Um, 
Hardly ever is there packing. The customer purchase boxes or packing supplies. Yes. Is there items of exceptional value? We say no. Back to the important information booklet. Just verify that the customer has received it on the bill of lading. Cover on that. And then if they received it within three days, they agree to waive it, that they have read it. This is our valuation options. Basically goes over what we, uh, our coverage for damage claim process. We have the th several different options. There's the basic, actual cash value, full value, full value, no deductible, full value, deductible 250, full value, deductible 500. It's so an agreement between us as a business and them as a client. The basic covers them at 60 cents per pound. Like I said, it works well for things like dressers, not so much TVs. The actual cash value, that goes in as today's depreciated cost. I think it gives you the most bang for your buck. We have the full value. We replace it, the full cash value based on the purchase receipt. The deductible of 500, that one costs 150 the deductible of 250 whoops you can tell on there it'll have 90 you can do the full value no deductible and that one's 320 I don't know why it says 300 today our customers doing the actual cash value This is what you're gonna do as soon as you get to the house. Moment you arrived, our arrival time is between 9.30 or 8.30 and 9.30. So today we're gonna to arrive at 8.45. Make sure your AM and PMs are all lined up. We finished our load pretty quick. We were out of there within an hour. There was no double drive time. We'll say yes. We started driving today at 9.45. And we drove till 10.15. Time start unload would be the 10.15. It was an unload, so it went pretty fast. So we're going to say 10.45. 10.46 works. If we had taken a lunch, this is where you would mark it. We were done before our lunch break, so we did not do it. Unlisted employee, or whoever you are, we'll say you're Naquan Bragg. All right, van number, official total hours is three. That's what we have as well. This is when you're gonna call it into the office. Let them know, hey, I finished my move. Your customer also purchased two wardrobe boxes. Decided she wanted to keep them. So that's why we said yes back at the beginning. Gives you your price, your total rate, say next. Gives you your total, gives you your container charges, and your sales tax. There was a fuel charge fee. It's at the 12%, so you do the 0.12. Gives you 47.88. There were no overtime hours, and there were no extra men needed for this job. There's no adjustment. We only mention gratuity because so many people ask. This is the one time you can't hit for hint for a tip is at the end of the move when you're going over the bill. Just mention it to the customer briefly. They'll tip if they want. If they don't, say no. Today they're saying yes. They're tipping each of us 50 bucks to be paid by credit card. Next. This is gonna say that the carrier agrees to it. We received the payment. So, 
they're in agreement with the total bill, and then received by whoever the driver was or whoever's doing the tablet. So make sure you have the right total. So balance due seven nineteen ninety four. Open up Bluefin. Order ID. You're going to type in the last last name of the customer, and you can only use the first ten digits. Our total is seven nineteen forty. Pay now. Device not connected. We don't have a working Bluefin device, but you're going to turn yours on. It says power button on the side. It says booting up. All right. You're going to click on this little blue uh, icon in the corner, a little connection, and it'll say device connecting. It'll search. Sometimes it'll fail, so you hit scan again. And then it'll give you a WPFFF followed by a bunch of numbers. You're gonna click on that. Why is bad ready? Go back in here. For some reason we got rid of our information. That was 71940. No tip, because they already agreed to do it on the other one. Custom amount, I don't know. My bad. It's called editing. <laughs> and then at this point, you'll take the card from the customer and you'll swipe it. It'll go through. swipe I don't need like all right I didn't like it doesn't like my swiper but you'll process the payment by clicking the green arrow and then it'll come up on here as either processed or declined due to non-sufficient funds most of the time it'll clear you're gonna go ahead and and you'll uh, click send receipt, you'll get the email from the customer, you'll just type the email in, and then that will be the end of that. And then when you're finished, you go back to Canvas, we got payment, everything was kosher, submit. At this point, you go to sync, you're going to tap to sync, that way you can make sure all five forms get uploaded. All right, and then while it's syncing, just make sure that this is what you're doing before you guys get back, or once you get back and we give you guys, you know, the time to clean out the truck on the side, get the truck parked. This is all ample time to be syncing the tablet. That way, no forms are being left out there that we have to go in and clear. Justin, I'm one of your movers today. I also have uh, Danny here. She'll be doing a great job for us. Is uh, everything ready to go? Yeah. All right, you mind if we step on in, take care of some paperwork? Come on in. All right, so basically what we got here, just a couple forms. We'll go through them as quick as possible. First one we have for you today is the electronic signature consent form. Basically, the state of California requires us to have hard copies for all the services we're providing for you today. Um, fortunately, we're doing everything electronically. Um, that way we'll email your receipts versus having hard copies. Is that something you agree to? I do. Awesome. Cool. Alright, next one we have for you today is the important information for persons moving household goods. This should have came across in an email, basically describes what we can and can't move according to the state of California. Basically goes over uh, some of the rules that the California Public Utilities Commission lays out. Do you recall receiving this email? I do. Awesome. Alright. 
got to release a liability. Based on the walkthrough that we just did, um, looks like we're gonna be unhooking and hooking up your uh, appliances, including your washer, dryer, um, fridge. There's also a low hanging branch outside, so I'm gonna mark the exterior risks, and we're putting uh, all this stuff into storage, and you would pack some of your own boxes. We aren't, we didn't pack the boxes, so we don't know how they got packed, what's inside. So basically, if anything were to be damaged inside the box, that's not our liability. Basically, mark them here, go ahead and initial. Saying you agree to the release of liability. And done with that. All right, last one we got for you is the billing services agreement. There's just a little bit we got to touch on before we go ahead and get started. First thing I'd like to do is just verify that all of this information is correct. This is uh, the address we have, showed up to, this is where we're headed. There's no special instructions, nothing like that. That's good. Awesome. We're going to use household goods and personal effects today. Uh, we got the one truck, two men, 133 per hour. Okay. Um, we also, the state of California on our billing services agreement requires the important information booklet uh, acknowledgement. So just one more time back to that original form, receiving that email. So the last one we got for you right now is the valuation declaration. Basically, it's coverage options. Uh, it's an agreement between us as a business, you as a client. If anything were to happen, this is the damage process we follow. There's the basic coverage that gives you 60 cents per pound. Works well for things like dressers. Doesn't work well for things like TVs. We have the actual cash value. That's what we would offer you today at today's depreciated cost. Basically, you prove your purchase receipt and then basically 10% per year. We also have the full value protection which we would cover at the purchase price. And we cover that with two, three different deductibles. There's the no deductible, which costs 320, a $500 deductible, which costs 90, and then the, yeah. oh, deductible of 250, and that one costs 120. So, uh, which option sounds good to you? Tell me more about actual cash value. Actual cash value, I think it's the best. You get the most bang for your buck. The actual cash value, uh, that's where you're actually gonna be getting money back. Basically, it gives you a good down payment on a new uh, piece or uh, electronic, whatever gets damaged. I find that that one works the best. It's the cheapest, but you get the most bang for your buck. Excellent, I'll go with that. Okay, that one costs 150. Go ahead and get your signature, and that'll be added on to the end of your bill. Okay. All right. All right, ma'am, so it looks like we were able to do your move today in the three hour minimum. It's gonna give you a total of uh, $3.99. How do you wish to pay? Uh, with a credit card. With a credit card, all right. All right, ma'am, let me just go ahead and pull up my credit card processing app, it's called Bluefin. Go ahead and get your process today. Alright. Sorry, sometimes the tablet's a little slow. It's okay. Alright, just connecting up to our device. Like I said, we got you done on the three hour minimum today, so total is going to be three ninety nine. dollars Does that include my valuation as well? That does not. Good call. I forgot all about that. <laughs> So your amount today is going to be $5.49. Pay now. And then uh, go ahead and take your other card. Thanks. Slide. Okay. Set. want to go ahead and confirm payment. It also asks if you'd like to tip. Gives you the options for 10% or custom. Awesome. Next. All right. Send email. And then uh, what was your email address one more time? 
uh, abc at gmail.com. Cool. All right. Looks like we're good to go. It was a pleasure moving to you today. And uh, I don't know if they, anybody else on the team has pitched the reply card yet. It's basically a survey. Ask you to rate our services one through five. I strive for five, so I'm sure my crew does as well. If you wouldn't mind filling that out, sending it in, I'd really appreciate it. We do a lot of things, hours, um, prizes, basically kind of go off of that. So just let us know how we did, and then there's a comments box if you want to add any additional notes. Thank you very much. Yep, have a good day. So basically, that's how you go over Canvas and Bluefin. If you have any other questions, feel free to ask. But it's all pretty simple and straightforward. So best of luck, guys.